Motivation, motivation, motivation. What's driving their behavior? What's driving the question? What's driving the statement? Before you respond to any question, you need to take a split second to ask yourself, where's that coming from? Because the question that you get is probably not the question that they wanted to ask. Example, get yourself a nice new FBI hat, right? I told you there's a story behind those hats. We're sitting in a live event just like this one. President of the company, Brandon Voss, who's obviously not here today, gets the hats from New York. I asked him before one of these live events, I said, Brandon, how many hats do you still have at your house? This, is, this was his response. Um, the lady that is my intermediary who, who gets them for me, her name is Susan. She's an executive assistant in the FBI field office in New York. She sits on the uh, she sits on the 10th floor of the building. The FBI Association store is like on the 17th or 18th floor of the building. She's one of the few people inside the building that actually has keys, not only to the store itself, but to the individual cabinets. And so every time that I go to New York City, because I get up there quite a bit, because I saw a family in Jersey, every time I go to New York City, I make sure that I take a trip to the New York field offices of the FBI so I can talk to her and take her out to lunch to keep that relationship going so that you know, it just, it just makes my request of her a lot smoother going forward whenever I need to purchase the hats. Now, she'll put those hats, depending on how many I order, in a big box and she'll take it down to FedEx and she'll, she'll FedEx them to me and then I've got her number or her handle here in my Venmo account, so all I gotta do is hit that button and I'll send her whatever the requisite money is for the hats and then the hats come to my house, I'll put them in the basement and then based on where we're going, I'll grab a handful and take it to the venue. And so they just sit down there until such time. <laughs> what was the question? I asked him what time it was and he built me a clock. Because it was a bad question. The question I wanted to know was, could you mail a hat to one of the participants in the online course that did an exceptional job and I wanted to reward them with an authentic FBI hat. So that was the hat. That was the question that I wanted answered, but I didn't ask it. And he fell into the trap of not knowing where the question was coming from or what I really wanted with a shotgun response against the wall and just basically telling me to pull what I wanted out of his response. So my point is before you ask or before you respond to a bad question, find out where it's coming from. People will ask you question A and they want the answer to question B, but they will not ask question B for whatever reason. Likewise, before you respond to a statement that doesn't make sense to you, find out what the motivation is, what the behavior is. We get so, we get so concerned about what they are actually what actually comes out of their mouth that we fail to look at the motivation and that's where the true answer is. We talked about dynamics being negative in certain conversations, negative dynamics and negative emotions driving decision making and driving behavior. In every difficult conversation, there's going to be a presenting dynamic or emotion, there's going to be a latent dynamic or emotion. When you first start using the black swan method, you're going to be focused solely on what's presenting, what you can see. As you get better at this stuff, you want to, um, if you want to get more bang for the buck, you need to go after the latent dynamic or emotion. So tell me what you hear. I'm going to give you something presenting. I'm going to give you something latent. I can't believe she did this to me again. She slept with my best friend in my house. I hate her for it. This is killing me. What's the presenting dynamic or emotion? Anger. Clearly, right? Clearly. What's the latent dynamic or emotion? Pain. Pain and betrayal. Did I say anything about pain? Did I say anything about betrayal? No. 
That's your intuition. That's you knowing something without knowing how you know it. Sandy talked about it earlier. 20 million bits of information per second is what your, is the, is what your subconscious, your intuition is capable of processing. Don't ignore it. It'll never let you down. It's kept us alive for thousands of years. It's never going to let you down. What will let you down is your brain, conscious brain. Your conscious brain will be like, I can't say that. What if I'm wrong? What if I generate an adverse response? I can't say that. But the problem with that is you guys heard bet pain and betrayal. If you don't articulate that for me, I don't know that you get it. Go back to what I talked about earlier, listening, the cheapest, most effective concession that you can make one person to another. We all have an, an unquenchable thirst to have somebody else understand who we are, what our environment is like. We just do. And when you're listening at the deepest level that I talked about earlier, empathetic listening, you are giving your counterpart, you're changing the chemicals in their brain. You believe that? You are giving them hits of dopamine, you're giving them hits of oxytocin just by listening. You're satisfying a need that all of us have. It's coming out in very small doses, but you are in essence getting your counterpart high when you listen to them. And you're showing an interest. Interesting persons, interested persons become what? Interesting. And subconsciously, you're telling them that you're going to call in that favor later in the conversation. But all of us have that desire to have someone else understand what we're going through. And I don't understand, or I don't recognize that you know what I'm going through unless you do what? You've got to verbalize it. You, what Sandy talked about earlier with tactical empathy. Recognition is only part of it. If you recognize and don't verbalize, how do I know you get it? And you're, as I mentioned, your biggest hurdle is, what if I get it wrong? What if I offend them? I've had clients come back to me and say, hey, I did what you said. Uh, I, did, uh, I labeled this guy the other day, and it didn't work. I say, well, what, does, what does that mean, it didn't work? Well, I labeled him, and he went off on me. I said, it worked. You didn't get the response you wanted, made you uncomfortable, and therefore, in your mind, it didn't work. But in his response, the guy's response, in, that, in his response was what? More information. More information. And not only that was it more information, it was likely more truthful information because he was able to correct. And the desire, and Troy's going to talk about this in a couple minutes, the desire to correct is irresistible. And I'm completely amazed at the compromising information people will give you when they're correcting you. They will give you information they have no business sharing with you just to correct you, just to tell you, stupid, you got it wrong. Here's what it is. And then they lay out a treasure trove of information. And you were like, oh, I am dumb. Thank you. <laughs> so point, stay curious. That's the bottom line. Stay curious. Go into every one of these conversations. I don't care how long you've had a relationship with the person that you're engaging, whether it's 15 seconds, 15 minutes, 15 years, in a difficult conversation, go into that conversation assuming that you have something to learn. Judgment free. Always on the lookout for black swans. Those little pieces of information, if uncovered, will change the direction of the conversation and ultimately the outcome. Stay curious. You know what this will also do for you? Staying curious in a tough conversation, staying curious keeps you from getting triggered. You cannot be angry and curious at the same time. Your brain doesn't work that way. You gotta choose. Think about that for a second. People always ask, how do I, how do I prevent myself from getting triggered? Right? You choose to get triggered. 
staying curious behind the motivation is more important than anything else. It's going to help you uncover things, help you not to rise to emotional bait. Because believe it or not, there are people on the planet that will bait you into an argument just to get you wound up and make you dumber so that you wind up doing something that you shouldn't do. You believe that? There are people on the planet that will do that to you. When you get attacked during a difficult conversation, that attack is going to come from one of three places. They've tried to tell you in another way, and you just, you're not picking it up. And so this attack is a manifestation of their frustration. You have failed to recognize the pressure that they're under on their side of the table. Procurement people, for example. If I ask most of you what you think about procurement people, it ain't going to be a pleasant thought. Where we fail to realize with procurement people, and I've had them say it verbatim, they're humans too. They're giving you a hard time over price. You know why? That's what they're paid to do. They're under tremendous pressure in their organizations to cut price everywhere they can. That's how they get evaluated. That's how they get promoted. That's why they got hired. How many of you guys, how many of you guys have taken that stance to, to, to demonstrate for your procurement people that you're dealing with that you understand what the lay of the land looks like from their perspective? I would venture to say not many of you. A procurement person told me that their job was the equivalent of herding cats in a house that was on fire with the villagers out front with pitchforks and torches. <laughs> That's how they feel their job is. And so staying curious to understanding where that attack might be coming from. So first place the attack comes from is they've tried to tell you in another way you haven't picked up on it. Second place, you fail to acknowledge the pressure they're under. Third place, they're trying to manipulate you. You've got to figure out which one it is before the conversation can go anywhere. In that moment, you have to stay in that moment. Most of us, we get hit in the face during a difficult conversation. We get attacked. We want to pivot off of whatever we're talking about, go somewhere else in the conversation, because that attack made me feel really uncomfortable. Unexpressed negative emotions and dynamics never die. So you can pivot off of that if you want to and ignore it. it hasn't gone anywhere. It's coming back later in the conversation. So you might as well stay in the moment, deal with it in the moment.